So next in our series talking to people in Douglas South by-election, I've got Michael Josem here, who's uh, well known to us in so many different disguises, but polit politics has definitely been one of your interests, no doubt about it. Now, Lib Van, you're already there, the chairman, isn't it? Yep. Situation. So this is a natural thing for you to do. Kate uh, has had it as that group, so you're hoping to obviously pick up that sort of traction, I'm, I'm guessing. Same policies, definitely on side, committed to whatever they say as a, as a party. Yeah, absolutely. And so, like, at the outset, let me acknowledge the service of Kate Costain and Bill Malarkey, uh, in that they both served the Douglas South uh, electorate for about a decade each, uh, and they were wonderful servants. And so it's really unfortunate that, uh, that this by-election is happening at all. However, it's a powerful reminder of the importance of our health service, and that's one of the key reasons I'm running, is to fight for local, mm -hmm. high-quality and universally accessible health services. Okay, but that is in the manifesto for the party, right? You don't have your own separate agendas or anything like that, or do you put your own little twists in there when you go around door knocking? Yes, yeah, so certainly there's only one election, one seat up up for contests well, here in here in August. Or, or, yeah, there's two know, seats, but only well, one constituency, right? Yes, and okay. so and so I I am the Liberal Van Cannon, and so we will have and we will produce a series of policies over the next few weeks. Uh, we will publish a, a manifesto. Who will? The, the Van will? Yeah, yeah. So and you, Michael Jones. It's, it's the same thing. So I am, it's my name on the ballot paper. Yeah. I am the Liberal Van candidate. I am, you know, unreservedly Liberal Van Cannon, and, and we will release policies that are relevant to Douglas South. But you sign up as yes. advance to the policy of that party, do yes. you not? And yeah. In oh, the yeah. past, it's become unstuck for many people, well, a few people anyway, who have decided once they get in, they can't keep to that policy. Do you feel you can? Unreservedly, 100%, yes. And so let me, let me be very clear about it, because I think what your question there is one of fundamentally of, of loyalty. And my mm. number one loyalty as the, as the member for Douglas South, if I'm fortunate to, to be elected, will be to, to the people of the Isle of Man. Mm -hmm. My number two priority will be the people of Douglas South. And my number three part priority will be the party itself. And You've so, been that third on your list. Yeah, absolutely, because let me, but let me be very clear. The reason that Liberal Vannon exists and the reason that I am running as, as a candidate here is to do what is best for the people of the Isle of Man. Uh, and that is a very simple rationale. Um, that's entirely why, that's why Liberal Vannon exists, is to benefit the people of the Isle of Man. Um, and so that's why I'm running here. You know, many people have, have in recent weeks have said, hey, Joseph, you should run, um, because we want someone who will be a strong voice for local jobs, someone who will fight for our local health mm. service to be high quality, local and accessible. Okay, but I, I need to make this point one more time. People have fallen off the van because no, they couldn't... I, I will not be falling off. I'm the chair of Liberal Vannon. I'm un unreservedly on board. So if, if the party says... That this you go with that you yeah. don't have to say well actually i think something completely different and, yeah. and have it yeah so i i i, right. I, I, okay. I think there's a weird line of question no no yeah, no no it's not because it because it's happened that's the trouble oh, it's sure. exactly why people out there will want to know if you're absolutely on message with the van it's very very important yes, I'm, I'm, right. I, I'm on message with Levan. i'm the chair right. of the okay. van. i'm don't, the candidate let's move on yeah. what what makes you want to stand yeah, so just so this, you, you haven't got a job at the minute. You're, you're in between, is that why you're looking for something to do? So, so I'm standing because many local people have, have encouraged me to stand in recent weeks, and they've said that they they want someone who will be a strong voice for Douglas South, and that's mm -hmm. why I'm running. Um, and so they want someone who will fight for local jobs and fight for the local, accessible, high quality healthcare. Fine. We've well, only just announced. Yep. So your, your manifesto hasn't been done yet, or have you been thinking about it for some time, just waiting for the right moment to announce? So I've been thinking about different issues here, uh, and, some, uh, and, and, and many people have, have, been, have been speaking to me about different issues, uh, in, that, in that currently in the, in, the, in the shadow of the coronavirus pandemic, mm -hmm. uh, you know, many people have said to me, hey, Joseph, we want you to run, and, and, and forgive me for, for, to, to, to the audience here for saying the same thing over and over again, but that, like, that's, that's why I'm running, is to, to fight for local jobs and to fight for well, a strong Okay, well you said that over and over again, yeah. but there's more to this, right? I mean, there's, you must have other issues. Do you want to be part of government? Do you want to work with government? Or, because, you know, there's, again, history there, although it hasn't quite worked out in the past. Do you see yourself as being the opposition party, and therefore you'd be part of that? So I see, if, if I'm elected to be the, the member for Douglas South, it will be my job to be Douglas South's representative to the government, not the government's representative to Douglas South. And so in that sense, um, I will unreservedly fight for the people of Douglas South. And so one of the things that you know is very clear at the moment, there are a lot of people out of work on the Isle of Man, a lot of jobs at risk, a lot of wages under pressure. And so that's why I will not accept any departmental role because I think that the idea of taking the salary uplift at this time Mm -hmm. would be uncomfortable with me. And so I will not seek to serve as a departmental member. I will, if I'm... Well, it's more than that. Let's say yeah. you know, won't be part of government, basically. You want to keep independent I, from... I, from I, I will serve... My, my full-time, 100% commitment will be to the people of Douglas South. Yeah. Um, is that 
again something you feel when let's suppose you got in fully for a full term would that still be your commitment or was this only for this first uh, 12 and a bit months of, of, of the actual office what, how do you see it so, so I, haven't, I haven't even thought about what what I do in my second term as, as yeah. member, like, like I, my, my focus and my commitment to the people of Douglas South is for is for the life of this Tim Lord I will serve 100% full-time as the member for Douglas South mm -hmm. I will not seek or accept or you know if appointed I will not serve in any of these these departmental roles I will not accept any of that that salary uplift because so many people here in Douglas and especially in Douglas South you know there are people in Annika there are people in in Port Rose who are doing it tough you know a good friend of mine you know she's a you know a beautician and you know and I hear the the struggles of so many people in Port Rose and Annika um, who are doing it tough um, and 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 really it's you know it would be uncomfortable and uncomfortable for me uh, to to, to, to think about anything other than being the 100% full-time member for uh, Douglas South. Is this going to be a full-time job, therefore, for you? I mean, because yes. uh, will you not be looking for anything else to do? Or, I mean, no, it will be 100% full-time. I will not be running any other businesses. I will not be employed by anyone else. 100% full-time member for Douglas South. Of course, with this accent, people might, some might go, what's he even interested in the Isle of Man? I mean, you, I know you're very passionate. We talked about this in yeah. the past. But, you know, you could be back in Australia. You could be doing something elsewhere. What makes you so strongly affiliated here with the island? Sure. So I, I feel like I'm the luckiest boy in the world in that I grew up in one of the greatest countries in the world. And I will always, you know, have respect for that heritage growing up in Australia. But I'm so lucky that not only was I born in one of the greatest countries, I managed to migrate to an even better one. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the things that I love here about the Isle of Man are the people, the community, uh, I love playing sport. You know, I'm involved with the Douglas Rugby Club, the Douglas Basketball Club, the Manx Netball Association. Um, you know, the, even the Castletown Hockey Club. Um, you know, I love that, and I, I love the community. And so, like earlier today, is a good example of that. Um, you know, one of the things that I've been doing right throughout this coronavirus pandemic is uh, delivering food parcels for the people um, with the food bank. Mm. And so, that food bank is such a wonderful, oh, such a wonderful incarnation of the community spirit. And that is neighbours helping out neighbours. Uh, and so, that is that is why I love the island. Have you got anything you'd like to put forward, like bills? You got any things that you particularly have? Uh, uh, you know, we need to change the laws on things. Uh, let's try that one. You know, how, how do you think the government's been doing as well? Sure. So, so I'll, I'll be releasing a whole series of policies over the next few weeks mm -hmm. that, that come out of listening to the people of Douglas South. Um, one of the things that uh, you know, it's a bit of a surprising issue to me um, in in recent weeks is that is this idea of animal welfare, uh, and so and so here in here in the Isle of Man. Uh, our animal welfare protection is still 20 something years old. Uh, in, the, in, in the UK, for example, um, they recently updated to include a whole series of protections for animal welfare. Uh, and so, for example, uh, you know, it is illegal in the UK to use shock collars on cats and dogs. Similarly, um, uh, you know, there's a, a local resident, uh, Charles Price, who's a wonderful advocate for, um, for introducing here in the, U in the Isle of Man, uh, Finn's Law. Uh, and so that is about protecting service animals, so police dogs, prison dogs, and so on, to ensure that there is a, um, a similar, um, there's an appropriate crime mm -hmm. um, for uh, uh, an appropriate punishment for people who, 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 who harm service animals. Mm -hmm. Similarly, uh, and one of the other things that, that I've heard loud and clear in recent weeks um, is an unmitigated outrage uh, at, the, at the incredibly lenient sentences that some people ha who have been um, predators uh, and sexual predators on Sex children. Sex crimes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think it is, you know, unconscionable that some of these people are being let off without even ha serving prison time. Uh, that is so, going to review. We, uh, there's one particular case, obviously, we good, could good. Yeah, and, and so I think, and, you know, I've, I've heard loud and clear, many local residents have said, mm. hey, we need tougher crimes for these bastards. Okay. Um, opposition, do you see yourself as opposition then? Let's try on this, this, this thing. I mean, how much would you support the government? Or is it case by case, you know, bill by bill? Sure. So we'll, we'll su I'll support the government whenever they do something good, and I'll criticise the government when they do something bad. You know, I, I've been a long time volunteer in local sport as an umpire for, for basketball, netball, and so on. And so I'm used to blowing the whistle. And you know, sometimes you know, in the heat of heat of passion, oh. I will get it wrong. But I tell you what, I will when when, when I see a foul, I'll blow the whistle. Uh, we're running out of time, but if you didn't get in this time, would you still come back and, and try again in, in the 12 months' time you know, for the full general election, something? Uh, look, it depends what the people of Douglas South say. And yeah. so and so, I think that that that. The electoral process and the democracy is about putting myself forward as a, as a servant, a representative, not a ruler. Uh, and if the people of Douglas South say they don't want Michael Joseph, then, <laughs> then they will not have Michael Joseph. And Joseph. have you got political experience anywhere else or done anything else? You 
you know. Yeah, so look, I was, I was a, a union leader back in Australia, um, growing up at university and so on, and, and so that was something that I did, um, work for various members of parliament. Um, you know, my mother was a, was a candidate for the Australian Labor Party 25 years ago, um, and, uh, and I served for, for various members of the Australian Liberal Party in, in, in parliament. Um, that was, you know, 10 or 15, 15 years ago now. Um, and, and so I, 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 have a, I have an ongoing interest, less in politics, I don't really care about politics, but I have an interest in policy. Uh, and so that's why um, you know, my interest is very much about listening to the people of Douglas South, to be a strong advocate, to fight for local jobs and to fight for the health service to be local, accessible, high quality.